what's going on guys and welcome back so today I just want to do a quick video showing you guys how to hardwire a dash cam in your car but not only that in this clip I want to show you guys how to hardwire how to access the A pillar and how to run the front and rear dash cam so let's get straight into it just before I uh, begin to show you how to hardwire it let's go over what this actually is so it's a car DVR exclusive power box meaning that it will run power to your dash cam until it hits a certain voltage and what this basically does is it allows there to be 12 volt power running to your dash cam and when it hits a certain voltage so say 11.6 in this case it will automatically switch off the power to your dash cam so that it will always conserve enough battery for your car to start. This is actually a really uh, good hardwiring kit to have for your dash cam in order to make sure that your car is always going to start if your dash cam is plugged in and hardwired with constant power. That's really important and it's really important that you understand what this actually is. Okay, so first things first, let's find out how we're going to mount this bad boy. So, mine's already done at the moment. So, mine is mounted in your typical spot there. Okay, and it turns on with the ignition to the car. So, put the key in, turn it to ignition on. Okay, so now this camera has GPS as well, so I had to run three cables okay now the rear dash cam it's just that little square right there that's the rear dash cam from the rear view I'll give you a closer look so that's it there so i ran that this way along there up there and ran it along there then put the cable through here i took off this sensor cap and then just ran the cable through here and plugged it straight in there as for the power cable, I ran it from here, it tucks under the lining and then runs down the A-pillar and then through the same rubber grommet I used for the power cable for the amplifier. And then you can either go straight to your fuse box because there is your fuse box in the engine bay or just tap off another switch 12 volt power source. Now the reason why you want a 12 volt switch power source that way it will only turn on with your ignition unless you're looking for 12 volt constant power then find a power source that allows 12 volt constant power or a fuse that allows 12 volt constant power and that's basically it and then I have the GPS which is right here and it's a really long cable but I just tucked it in and then ran along here and tucked the rest of the cable inside the lining and that's it that's all it is it's really simple to run your cabling but the main thing is accessing where you want to run the cabling so to access your a pillar there's a clip up the top here that slides out this way don't try to just pull it straight out it's not going to come out so you remove your seal and then grip it try to have clean hands because you don't want to dirty it but if you do just wipe it clean after and then just grip it and pull up this way and kind of just pull it a little bit that way but not too much because it's not going to come out it's clipped in that way so you just want to slide it out and I'll show you what it looks like after I remove it okay so you grip it like this pull it out a little bit and then slide it out okay it's a bit stiff in there but just take your time and it will come out like that okay and then once you have it out, you'll be able to just see the clip. So you just have to make sure the clip is taken out. And then, as you can see down here, it's come out. All you have to do is remove it. Okay? Now, this is the clip that is clipped in. Right there. So, as you can see, there's tabs on it that hold it into this part here. So, you can't just pull it out. You have to slide it out until it comes out to here. And then it will remove. Okay? Just like that. And then in order to, re to reinstall it, all you have to do is line up this piece at the bottom like that and then 
push it down in and push it back in and it will go back into place okay i'll actually just show you quickly so i'll just line up the bottom first like so push it down see how it's flush now and then all you have to do is push it back in and it will clip straight back in and that's it so that's how you remove the a pillar in order to access behind the airbag because when you're installing this uh, dash cam you want to run your wires behind the airbag not in front that way if an accident happens and your airbag goes off it's not going to pull the cabling down and it will just sit behind it like so and then you just use some cable ties and I just hose tie it to the existing cable that's already here as you can see also just to show you another part see this part here this part clips into here so when you're putting it back in you want to make sure all that lines up but as long as you line up the bottom first and have it flush in you can just push it straight back in after you've lined the bottom up just push it straight back in and it will clip back into place and that's how easy it is to access the a pillar so now let's get into uh routing the camera cable now you know how to access the a pillar i'm also going to show you how to remove the the bottom flap as well in order to run the cabling and connect it through the rubber grommet that is at the firewall that way you can run your positive cable to your fuse box and get your 12 volt switched power that way okay guys so to remove these three this lower flap all you have to do is remove three three torque screws t20s one two and three okay you just see it on the edge of the screen so I've already removed two just to show you and then now I have to remove this one and the lower flap will just come down. Okay, now you don't have to use a power tool just because I am. You know, you can just use a normal T20 Torx screw, screwdriver. Okay, now to remove the lower flap. So you just push it forward a bit because it does have a little um, part protruding. As you can see, you see this part here that protrudes? That's why you've got to push it in a bit and then pull it down. Okay, now we get to here. Don't worry about this, this is for my light up star, so don't worry about it, you won't have it. Okay, so to remove your OBD2 socket and your hood release cable, all you have to do to remove, to remove the OBD2 socket is pull back on the tab and then lift it out. And there you go, that's how you remove that. And then to reinstall it, you just have to press on it, put it back in, and then slide it back up, and that will lock it back into place. Look, see? You pull it back, and then you push it back in. That's how you lock it back into place. Okay? So that's how you remove that. And now, in order to remove the hood release cable, you need a Phillips screwdriver. And then there is a screw in here. You just have to reach in underneath until you get to the screw you kind of have to do this by feel guys because you can't really get your head underneath I mean you probably can if you try hard enough but there we go we got it in and then lefty loosey righty tidy there we go now we've removed the screw and now in order to remove it okay so as you can see this is how you're going to remove it you just have to push this through you don't have to turn it any way, you know, you just have to push it straight through, get it through the gap and then continuously push it through like that, okay? It just comes out like that. And there you go. And then you just have to turn your footwell light to the left and then unplug it. And that is how you remove this lower panel. And that's it. See, as you can see now, it's completely loose. Okay, so we will remove that out of the way so we have all this room to uh, wire whatever you need to. This is also helpful in future projects when you need to wire something. Okay guys, so now that we've removed the lower flap, in order to remove all of this here, this kick panel and this scuff plate, I actually did a video when I show you how to route the cabling for your amplifier if you wanna add an aftermarket amplifier to your W204 and I show you how to remove all this stuff so if you want to see that just take a quick look at that video and I show you how to remove all this and in that video I show you how to take off these side covers which is basically the same procedure as removing this scuff plate you just have to pull this scuff plate off pull back this seal and then get a trim removal tool and get as close to the clip as possible and then pry it there's only two clips and that's it 
crypto, you have access to all of this here. Now that we know that we want the camera here, this is the power cable for my dash cam. And if I pull it out, as you can see, it just keeps coming out. And I've just run it along the top and you tuck it behind a, if, if you put your finger in, you can feel that there's a, a thick point of the roof linings. And then all you have to do is tuck it in behind that thick panel and then run it to your camera and measure how long your cable is going to be. Now in my case, it's a very long cable. So all I've done is I've hose tied it along the A pillar here. Okay, so that I don't have too much cabling dangling around. And all I've done is I've folded it over twice. Now if you have a GPS sensor, then just figure out if you want your sensor on your driver side or your passenger side. And either way, it's easy to run it because all you have to do is locate where you want your GPS sensor and then just stick it there and run the cabling along the roof lining until it plugs into your dash cam. Now that's pretty straightforward. The main thing here is how to run the power cable, where to get your 12 volt switched power and how to connect it. Now that we know how we're going to run the GPS if you have one and the power cable all we have to do now is find out where we're going to get our 12 volt switched power and where is the ground that we're going to use for the ground cable now in most cases it's going to be a bolt that is connected to bare metal of the car's chassis okay so this is where we're going to get our 12 volt switched power from okay so I've used number 36 okay and all I've done is use a fuse tap I've lifted up this rubber grommet here and as you can see it just tucks underneath the rubber grommet and then you simply push the rubber grommet back down in order to keep it airtight and watertight water resistant waterproof whichever you want to call it okay as you can see so it just simply plugs into this and as for where to run the cabling through the firewall so this is an Australian car right hand drive so the fuse box is on this side normally your battery will be here so you may have to remove the battery but maybe not and your rubber grommet if you take a closer look see that little gap right there I'll put an arrow so you guys can see and where that red cabling is running through right now that is the cable that runs off my yellow battery cable off my dash cam so this is the rubber grommet allows you to run cabling through your firewall so this is where you're going to run your power cable in order to get to your fuse box now because your fuse box if you're in America your fuse box is going to be on the other side over there it's still the same principle you just have to run your cabling through here and then tuck it all under here as you can see the red cable there I've just run it all in here all along here and you can just tuck it all along in there and then get it to your uh, fuse box and then use fuse number 36 it may be different but either way just test for a 12 volt switch power source so while, while the car is off you want to make sure that fuse does not work and when the car is on then the fuse is going to work okay and that is your 12 volt switch power source so now we know where we're going to run the cable through and where we're going to get our power source from all we have to do now is run the positive through the firewall so it comes out through the rubber grommet make sure that you do not take off the rubber grommet it's very important that you leave the rubber grommet there so that you still have that airtight seal so in order to prevent moisture from coming through the firewall as well okay so it's very important that you make a hole through the rubber grommet and go through the rubber grommet rather than pulling off the rubber grommet completely and then just running the cable through okay so there we have it now we just have to run the cabling down through the a pillar and then drop it down the side of the car so that we can wire it and push it through the firewall and connect it so let's do that okay so if you see here this is where the ground is for the camera. So the cabling comes down. This is the power cable for the uh, for the dash cam. It just runs down and all I've done is I've tucked it behind this here. 
Oh, and also to remove this, all you have to do is use a trim removal tool, push it in between here and pry it out and just pull it out. And that just comes off really simply. Okay, so normally this will sit in it like so. Okay, you line up these tabs, all these tabs here, you have to line them up and then just put it in there like so, line up the tabs and then push it in. And that's how that sits in. So, there we go. Now that's in flush, okay? And it's easier to remove your trim before prying this off. So normally, this trim would sit in like so, like that. And then all you'd have to do is get your trim removal tool, put it in here, and then pry it out. And then just use your hand and pull it straight out. And that's how you remove that piece, okay? And then we have two bolts here that are connected to bare metal. So these are great grounding points for your ground cable. As for the power cable. Okay, so remember that this is the power cable that comes off the A pillar. And then as you can see here, I've just tucked it behind here. Now, you could have easily just left the DVR box just in here and then like I used to do, I had it adhesive just here. Now, that's all fine too because it actually fits, but you still have to run your power cable through here and then drop it down in here. Okay, so this is how I've done it. I've the option to put the uh, power box through as well, but you could have easily just left it here and then run your power cable straight through here so that you don't have to have all this all the cabling down at the bottom here like I have okay as you can see here this is the cabling so just remember that your power cable comes down to your DVR box okay I've put it through here and if you follow the cable it just comes out see it goes through here and then drops just here and there's the DVR box and now the other side of the DVR box Okay, remember we have positive, negative, and a yellow cable that goes directly to the battery. So if you only have two cables, like this power box here, you've got only positive and negative. So your ground would go there, and you could easily just leave this in here like so, and then connected your ground directly there and run your positive, your red cable, your power cable, which is this one here. Imagine this is in here, so your red cable will then simply be extended so that it can reach your fuse box. And you can just extend it by using one of these. It's very simple. All you have to do is put the cable in one side and crimp it down, and then put the cable in the other side and crimp it down giving you an extension. Now as you can see mine here is really really long. Okay, as you can see it's it's extra long because you're better having some more cable than less cable. And then from here all you would have to do is let me show you. You would simply push it through that rubber grommet right there. As you can see right now I have three cables that go through it. Okay, two of them is for the dash cam and one is for the switch for the light up star. So you're probably only going to have one if you haven't run an amp cable yet. The thick cable is my amp cable. So you only have to imagine one cable going through there. And that's it. And then it will come out through your engine bay. It will simply come out your engine bay right there. As you can see, the rubber grommet. And this would be the one that goes to the battery, the one on the left. And then the other would be the one here that would then just come through here and then tuck underneath this grommet here and plug right in to the fuse box using this fuse tap and that's it that's all you have to do okay guys so let's just imagine for a second that this is the rubber grommet and this is your power cable that has to go through it do not take it off completely what you want to do is pierce a hole through it like so and then push your cabling through say like that this is an example okay pretend this yellow piece of paper here is your rubber grommet you want to pierce it just enough so that when you push the cable through it's completely airtight still do not make the hole too big 
where the cable can just freely run in and out because you want it to be airtight it's really important that you keep it airtight in order to keep the moisture out and any water when you're trying to clean your engine bay as well the last thing you want is for mold to build up or for moisture to start building up in and around all your electrical components because it will cause some harm okay and just a quick video of how to use one of these it's very simple all you have to do is get the cable that you're using to extend whatever cable you're trying to connect or the cable that you're plugging into your fuse tap and then put it inside make sure you get inside the little hole inside there so it's in the um, in the actual contact area so you put it right in the center and then all you have to do here is grab a pair of crimpers and crimp it down and follow your color code so if you're using a blue one follow the blue color for insulated closures and then also if you want you could always just use some heat shrink in order to protect it and, and keep it from water as well so it's kind of just to waterproof it so just to give you a little demonstration say this was your fuse tap and it was on the end of your fuse tap like so you just put your wire in this is the easiest way to extend your wire by the way and then I'm, it is a red connection so I'm going to go with the red the red color I put it in get it in the red area like so as you can see make sure the wire is in there and then just crimp down and there you have it a secure connection see that's it that's how easy it is to connect to a fuse tap and then all you have to do is plug your fuse tap in and remember like I said the fuse that go that you're replacing will now go into the bottom and the fuse you're using for your new device will go in the top and that's it guys that's how easy it is to use a fuse tap and connect a fuse tap to your wire that you're trying to connect it to okay there's nothing more to it than that so I hope uh, you guys can do it too it's very simple and make sure you always check your connection and like I said if you want from here you could always use heat shrink in order to secure the cable more so you would just make sure you put your heat shrink on first and then slide it over the top and you can just use a lighter or a heat gun and then you just light it and it will slowly shrink and that's it that's all there is to it guys there's really not much to it I mean that's pretty straightforward for you to use heat or a some sort of um, a naked flame in order to shrink this down and that's so that it can seal it and prevent it from exposure to moisture as well now that we know how to run the cabling for the dash cam at the front if you have a rear dash cam like so okay just line up your rear dash cam first and then proceed to tuck it into the roof lining and then you would run it along either side it doesn't matter which way you want to go it's going to be the same procedure in order to get it to the front of the camera okay so I ran it this way so it's just tucked in the roof lining and then in order to get past this part here without having to remove all this here because it's a pain in the ass to get back in place just use an extra long hose tie maybe tie two together if you want even and notice how that hose tie is there so if you duct taped it to it and then push your hose tie through notice how it comes out the other side right there this would be the easiest way for you to get the camera cable through the roof lining so you don't have to remove any of this stuff here this stuff is a pain in the ass to remove if you watch my other video I'll leave a link for you it is a pain in the ass to remove now look it wasn't that bad after all but believe me if it's your first time doing it it's going to be hard to do and then so once you electrical tape it to this hose tie use an extra long one if you have to and then just pull it through and it will come out right here okay and then proceed to run the cable there's my camera cable there and proceed to just keep running it down all you have to do in order to get past this point here is line it along here and then get a trimmer removal tool and proceed to press it in and then it will sit inside like this as you can see you can't even see it anymore and that's it and then from here you just have to keep running it along just keep running it okay 
there we go as you can see you can but you can't really see it at all and then once you get to this part here you're going to have to remove that pillar once you get here notice how this hose tie then passes through that's how you would push it through in order to get it to the roof lining again and then all you'd have to do is pull it a bit tighter and the hose and the the camera cable will get tighter and then fit up here and then from here it's just lining it to the roof lining tucking it in all the way past here and then if you're passing the middle like i said you just have to pry this down you could probably just use your hands there we go i just removed it there we go i just removed it with my hand okay and then as you can see here there's my cabling right there where the roof lining is so you would just tuck it in and then this cap would help to hold the the cable in place and then it would go to your dash cam now if you don't have to pass the middle at all then you don't even have to worry about passing this middle point but if if you did have to that's why i'm showing you how this would line up and then this is the the cabling now here for the rear dash cam as you can see this is the cabling now for the rear dash cam and then it just plugs into it and that's it that's how you would get your rear dash cam cable all the way to the front in order to plug into your dash cam and that's it guys that's how you install a dash cam in your w204 but most importantly how to access certain areas and how to get to the fuse box through the firewall that's the most important part running the cable isn't so bad it's mainly just getting to where you want to wire everything okay then we turn on the dash cam camera